Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. We've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Chupra, and today you find Ross, Widget and me, just a little bit east of Winchcombe, in a little hamlet called Brockhampton. And behind me, a wonderful looking house called Brockhampton Court. We're going to show you around this little village and the next door village as well with an extraordinary church. It's really well worth a visit. Come with me. Taking the tiny one-track lane out of Winchcombe signed to Belus Knapp, there is a small pull-in lay-by on the left from which you can find some spectacular views of Sewdley Castle. It's one of the angles from which it's possible to imagine what this place was like in medieval times. We didn't visit Belus Knapp ourselves. It's one of the many ancient burial grounds and forts dotted around the edge of the Cotswolds, which we, for the purposes of this series, have decided not to feature. Just a small whisper, however. Beela Snap is really worth a visit if that kind of thing floats your boat. Carrying on down the lane, we come with something of a shock to the village of Brockhampton. There, on your left, just a few metres from the road, is a huge country house, looking for all the world, just as it did when it was lived in by one family. This isn't the case today. This part of England is dotted with houses of this kind, almost all of which have to find ways to survive in a world where a house with four times more servants than residents is a difficult one to justify or maintain. The building of Brockhampton Park was started in about 1640 by Paul Pert, a close financial advisor to Charles I. He died a few years later and it passed to his niece Anne Skipwith. Anne's great-granddaughter, Mary Dodwell, later inherited the estate, and she married in 1746 Thomas Tracy, the owner of Stanway House, which we visited recently. Now, this convenient marriage and consolidation of wealth allowed the families to maintain houses like this without too much difficulty. Over the centuries, however, ownership of this great place changed many times, until, in the mid-19th century, it passed to the Craven family. They enlarged the house substantially over the next two generations and created the house and gardens you see today. During the Second World War, the house was used as part of the Cheltenham Ladies' College and shortly after the war as a recovery home for wounded soldiers. Then, briefly, a country club was based here and then it became the corporate headquarters for various companies. More recently, as the upkeep became prohibitive, the house became increasingly difficult to maintain and it was offered to the National Trust, who, in the absence of an endowment big enough to keep it up, refused the gift and eventually it took a turning that even in this part of the world, so rich in houses like this, is rare. It was bought by a housing developer, Barrett Developments. They turned it into the 21 flats that it remains today. They also converted many outbuildings and estate cottages, and it is now one of the rare places where it's possible to own a small piece of history and live, at least in your imagination, like the aristocracy of old. Whilst looking for a place to fly our drone, we drove back to the western edge of the village where we caught sight of something really unexpected. There, on the drive to a farm, stood a small herd of elephants. At first sight they looked completely real and we thought we should be careful with the drone. A herd of stampeding elephants in Gloucestershire would have been an embarrassment. However, they turned out to be made of wood. We aren't quite sure what these beautiful creatures are 
or for how long they'll be there, but they are amazing. There were even a couple of life-sized camels in the barn, one leaning slightly drunkenly with crossed legs against the wall. At the other end of the estate, a little lane leads down to the village. This sleepy little place is extremely quiet and the roads are narrow and bendy, but if you're walking it's certainly worth the effort. There's a small set of buildings which used to be a brewery. Sold to Shoals Brewery in 1921, they stopped brewing in 1927, but early home brew kits were manufactured here and sold right up until 1939. The date stone on the brewery building suggests that malting was carried out by the Wood family on the site since 1769. In 1998, the buildings were refurbished, the chimney stack reconstructed, and now it's a private residence. I hope you've enjoyed this visit to the kind of heartlands of the Cotswolds. It's been wonderful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon beside the subscribe button. It'll mean you'll get informed when we post other work. You can find us on all the other platforms, of course, and we will see you in the very near future. Take care.